Hello guys and welcome back to another episode of FIFA 21, my career mode with Oxford United. Uh, before we jump into any games, the first game is going to be against Peter Bratt, but we're just going to have a look at a few transfers and see what is going on. Like I said last episode, there was a fantastic comment about Marcus Brown who used to play for Oxford United. I think it was last season on loan. Um, so what we're going to try and do is we're going to go for a loan to buy offer and see if we can bring him back into the club. Um, definitely on that left wing, left mid, he could definitely do us a job. Um, he's 22 years old as well, so it's definitely a smart purchase for us to try and make. So we're going to go for the loan to buy option. I don't know what's gone on with FIFA. Um, for some reason, I now have a bald head. So it's ever since the update. Please don't, uh, t please, please don't think I'm responsible for this. I haven't changed, but we'll just say that these two are both represent representatives or wh whatever. Um, but it's not too important. So they're happy for him to leave on loan, and then they'll agree on a permanent deal if the price is right. So that's not too bad. We're definitely getting somewhere. One year, yeah, that's. I don't want to be having him here for two years and then have that in the back burner, whatever. One year, if we can get him over the line fantastic brilliant they're happy for a one year loan wow we're not paying that much no 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 I'm thinking more of a 50-50 Middlesbrough thinking 50-50 two grand is a lot for us to pay on wages we're only a little club we're only a teeny tiny club 70-30 okay 60-40 that seems fair you oh alright okay so he's basically told us that our offer, we can shove it. Anyway, let's jump into the match against Peter Bra. And here we are at home at the Kassam Stadium against Peter Bra. Um, I think this is going to be quite a difficult game, if I'm fully honest with you. After such a poor performance um, against Crew in the Cup, momentum and definitely morale is at an all-time low. As we saw from my uh, my half-time team talk, I was definitely not happy with, with the lads. So hopefully this game we can come out fighting, but I just just like I said, momentum and, and morale is just at an all-time low. There's a few players who are seriously close to being training with the reserves, um, being benched or worse, being sold. Because I don't need players who aren't going to pull the weight in the team. So the team that we're going to go out with today, unfortunately, uh, because I don't have another left back, Ruffles is still going to keep his spot in the team. But that is definitely a position I'm looking to replace. So we're going to go with Eastwood, Clare, Moore, Long and Ruffles in the wide positions. Gorin and Branagan in midfield. Ford and Henry out wide. Kelly and then Winnell up front. Kelly's going to come in just because Sykes played in the cup game and he's still tired. Um, so I don't want to burn him out, even though he's probably our most influential and important player. So we're definitely going to miss him today. The way Peter Bratt are going to line up, I'll try my hardest to pronounce the names. But once again, if I get them wrong, I do apologise. And it looks like Peter Bratt are going to go with five across the backs with Butler, Thompson, Beavers, Kent and Ward in defence with Boyd, Brown, Samidic and Car Clark, Harris and Isa up front. Um, I did get a bit tongue-tied there at the top. We seriously need a better performance than we've shown against crew there's going to be a lot of changes coming to this team I can promise you that um, if people don't start pulling the weight don't have some better performances because I'm seriously not going to stand for players being lazy lackadaisical not caring about putting on the shirt in front of our own fans I expect us to go out there and, and give it our all so let's see how we get on in this one eight minutes in and Peter Bratt look to move the ball forward they're passing it in nice little triangles we're going to try and jockey them off. Once again, CDMs don't look interested about coming back to help out the defence. It's going to be a through ball. Clark can't get there. And 10 minutes in, Peter Brad take the lead. And I'm seriously getting massively frustrated um, with the CDMs in this team. They're lazy. They don't care. What, what do I need to do in order to get those to work harder? I've tried going through the tactics and they just do not care. Look, look at them. They're just watching them play football. Players completely out of position. Why there's two people marking one player, I have no idea. Issa's through on goal. He tries to come across. He's not going to get there in time. East, Eastwood can't do anything, and they finish it off to make it 1-0. Some, some things are going to seriously change at this football club, I'm telling you now. Once again, Peter Bratt look at the stronger team as they look to press us again. It's with Brown. A little step over, step over again. He's going to find Issa. Issa now finds Clark Harris. Holding it back, finds Boyd. 
Can Boyd create anything here? Laxidatical defending again to Clark Harris. He's going to have a shot and that's a great save there from Eastwood. And once again, the defending. What's the point? What is the absolute point? If we're not going to pick up our men, we're going to get ruined in this league. Eastwood sticks out a glove and somehow gets a fingertip on it to push it wide. But the disappointment on my face at the moment, it's, it's just its not worth watching. The supporters pay to come and watch this team and it's just not happening. It's Brown to take the corner. He's going to visit into the box. We're going to come for it and he doesn't quite get to it, but he's going to zip it over the bar. Eastwood came off his line to try and gather that and completely missed it. It's been a very dull first half. Peterborough on the ball. Clark Harris finds Boyd. Clark Harris now to Isa. Knocks it back to Smidic. Smidic threw ball to Brown and he can't quite get to that and the ref is going to blow for half time. It's a hard one to call this half is because we've created absolutely nothing. Um, they haven't really had too many chances but the few chances that they've had they've looked menacing and the one big chance that they had they just took away. We go in at half time 1-0 down in front of our own fans and I'm, I'm getting to the end of my tether with these players. They're going to get us back underway and we've got 45 minutes to rectify um, the poor performance in the first half. Peter Rowe have definitely started the half lively. Smidich, can he do anything? We're trying to jockey him. Dangerous place to be trying that but Moore's going to come across and intercept the ball. Out wide to Henry. Henry now picks out Kelly. Can Kelly do anything with this? Three ball now to Winnell. Great touch. He's going to run forward. He's got that pace. We know he has. Can he He's run himself into a very awkward position? Tries to cut it back and it's another poor touch from an Oxford player. Peter Bratt again look to push forward. Isa. Little step over. And again. Can he create anything? He's going to find Smidich. Three ball out wide to Brown. Long trying to track and getting behind the goalkeeper. They get a little bit tied there. Back to Smidich. Back to Brown. Little step over back to Smidich and Brown. To Canu. Canu now at the back post to Isa. We're going to try and slide in. Get nowhere. It's a shot. Great save there from Eastwood. It's still being tangled in the box. It's going to fall to Isa. He's going to find Canu. And that's another great save there from Eastwood. And the pressure is really telling on us here. We just can't get the ball cleared. It's a great shot again and another great save from Eastwood. And it's thanks to Eastwood that we're still in this game. We're going to bring on Matty Taylor now for Winnell. Hopefully just to change the game a little bit. It's going to be Brown now to take the corner kick for Peterborough. He's going to sink it short. Awful corner. But it only falls as far as the edge of the box. It's going to fall to Canu. Back to Beavers. Back to Canu. Canu now to Brown. To Canu. To Brown. He's going to have a shot, another great save there from Eastwood and we can get rid of the danger. 20 minutes left to play and once again Peterborough look menacing. Quite a few step overs in the centre of the park, it's out wide to Canu. He's going to shield the ball, they're going to push it forward now. Out wide to Boyd. Back forward now to Canu who finds Isa. Can Isa do anything? Doing very pointless skills for no reason but he's going to pass it out wide now to Brown. Brown still tinkering with it on the edge. Back to Isa. Isa now trying to look skillful. Great tackle there. And he's going to. The ref's going to pull that back for a foul. And honestly, I've got no idea what the ref is even looking at here. It doesn't seem to be a foul. It just seems like he just gave him a little shrug, took the ball, and was about to move forward. But the ref sees that as unfair play. We're going to bring on Sykes now to see if he can, uh, can give us anything in that midfield. But first, we've got to defend this free kick. It's Brown to take. He's going to dummy it. Beavers is going to take a little pass forward. And they're going to have a shot and it's blocked. Only as far as Canu. Back to Butler. Butler now toying with it. Sykes straight away. Coming out with the ball. Can we push forward? We're going to try and go long to Matty Taylor. Matty Taylor now out wide to Brunagan. Awful pass. And they're going to regain possession. Still in the dying embers. And Peter Brat are hungry for more. Smidich now. Loads of step overs. Out wide now to Reed. Finds Canu. Can Canu create anything here? Little through ball to Isa, and thankfully Long gets the better of his man. We're going to try and pass it out of danger. Moore tries to go long. Awful pat. Smidic picks it up. Smidic finds Brown to Canu to Reed. Little through ball to Canu back to Reed. Passing on point. And what else needs to be said? I've got, I'm lost for words. They passed it around us like we weren't even there. And the it's now two nil in the 80th minute. Like, what are we doing once again? Like sliding in for no reason. They just make they're making us look stupid. It's a great goal from the captain Reed there to finish that. But defend the serious question's got to be asked of the defence going forward. 
once again, Peter Bratt tackle us in their half. They're going to look to press forward. Great ball forward to Issa, who's got the beating of Moore. Luckily, he's back on side now. Issa's causing us all sorts of problems with these little flick backs. He's going to fall to Brown. Brown pulls it back, sold the defenders, and it's just ruffles on his own. They're going to go wide now to Canu. Canu's got the only the keeper to beat. He's going to put it back to Brown. And three. It's three. What is going wrong? What What else am I meant to do? The squad's just not playing for me. Have I lost the dressing room? I, I have no idea what the problem is right now. But all I know is that this defending is woeful. It's a great finish. Great passing. But it's just not good enough from us. Now, in the 90th minute, 3-0 down, there's not really much we're going to be able to do. We're deep into extra time. Like a twizzle there, it just doesn't work. They pick up possession again, and I'm praying that the ref blows the whistle like he just has. And what what is going on? Like, some serious questions and some serious signings are going to need to come in if we're going to push for promotion. Because the way things are going at the minute, I am going to be sacked extremely fast. It's just not the performance that I was hoping we'd be putting out. To be, we were one nil down at half time. We looked like we was going to come back into the game, but to finish off three nil, it's just a joke. Some awful defending and some big changes need to be made. One little thing that I'm going to try on the difficulty is I'm going to take off competitive mode um, because I think this is what is causing them to do all the little step overs and little drag backs. Like we're in League One, it's just not realistic for me. So I'm going to take that off and see how we play on Legendary. Anyway, no need to dwell on the pass. It's time for our match against Swindon. And here we are, both teams just getting a bit of pre-match training in there. A few little flick-ups there from the Swindon lads. Um, we're going to pop over to our lads, as we can see, Sykes and a few of the others passing the ball around. Ruffles is in the team, as you can see, um, even though we are looking for a replacement at the moment. And finally, the match is going to be underway at Court Lane against Swindon Town. It's nice to see the lads just warming up beforehand in front of the fans, um, all the travelling fans today, just giving them something to look at. We need something completely different in this game. We need to find some heroes because the last game was just nowhere near good enough. We find ourselves in 18th. Swindon find themselves at 23rd position. Um, so we're above them in the league, even though we haven't started fantastically well. So hopefully we can provide a bit of a better performance than we have been. We've took off competitive mode now, so hopefully they won't be doing rollovers and kickbacks 24-7. And um, we can play a bit more realistic football, which will be nice to commentate on. I will announce the teams for you in just a few seconds as soon as we get into it. And the way Swindon Town are going to line up is as follows. As soon as it loads. So in goal they've got Freya. They've got Freyers and Bordry at the back with Cadiz and Ian Dolo out wide. Grant Donoghue and Payne in the midfield with Smith, Stevens out wide and Hope up front. Once again, any bad pronunciations, I do apologise. This is the way we're going to line up. Jack Tucker is going to come onto the bench for us today. We're going to line up with Eastwood in goal, Claire and Moschino in defence with Long and Ruffles on the wings. Uh, McGuane, Corrin, Sykes in midfield, Henry, Ford on the wings and then Winnell up front. Being the away team, Swindon are going to get us underway. Early on in the game and Swindon look to push forward. It's with Grant now upfield to Hope. Can Hope do anything? He's going to find Payne making a run. Claire blocks the angle but sees the overlap from Hope. Hope's going to have a shot and that's a great save there from Eastwood. It wouldn't have mattered anyway as Hope was offside for Swindon Town. And that is definitely dangerous early signs there um, from Swindon. As you can see, he's clearly offside and we're going to regain possession. It's our turn now to respond to Swindon. We're going to go out wide to Henry. Henry can make a lot happen from out on this wing. He's going to be greedy and have a shot of his own. Good save there from Fryer in goal. He's going to distribute it out now. Just as far as the halfway line. We're going to win that ball. Ref sees nothing wrong with that. It's Ruffles now. 
Back to Ford. Ford now finds Winnell. Winnell to Sykes. Three ball now to Winnell. Great play there. Can he make anything of this? He's going to try and have a shot. And it's blocked off the line and cleared by Swindon Town. And this game seems to be a really good one so far. 20 minutes deep now. And Swindon look to break forward. Long gets the challenge in. We're going to look to push forward now. McGuain finds Sykes. Beautiful ball out wide to Henry. We know he can make things happen. Beautiful ball into the box. He's going to be Winnell. And he had to adjust his body to try and stick his head on that. And he's going to sail it over the bar. But it's great signs there from, uh, from Oxford. Definitely early on. Better performance than we've shown in the last few weeks. It's just a shame he couldn't quite get the right connection on that one. With a lot of drama happening in the first half, Swindon's turn with Payne to find Hope. Hope now sees the overlap from two players, but it's going to be Smith who picks up the ball out wide. Can he do anything? Long trying to jockey the angle. A few little step overs. He's cut inside. He sold us an absolute treat. S. Wood's going to come out. He's going to make a save, but it's going to fall back to him. And they are going to find the goal in the 28th minute. Luck was definitely on Smith's side there with that one. But the defending is just not good enough there from Long. He gets sold an absolute treat. We've actually regained him back from Tesco's. He was there doing his weekly shop, as you can see there. Gets caught out of position. Smith tries to sell the keeper. He does an averagely well job. I think it's a great save to start with from Eastwood to try and block the shot. Uh, but it just wasn't enough. And Smith is going to find the goal. The old Oxford United now starting to show as once again Swindon put pressure on us. It's with Payne. Great interception there from Clare. Can we push forward? Up to now Sykes. Sykes now sees the run of Henry and these two have linked up really well this game. Henry in acres of space. Going to be intercepted. It's going to take a bounce. He's going to pick up the ball again. He's going to whip it into the box to find Winnell. Winnell to head out and that's a great save there from the goalkeeper, Fryer. And it seems to be a corner but the refs pulled it back for something and there's going to be an offside and to me that is definitely... His knee is in an offside position but I think that is a very, very, very um, tough call to make and VAR shouldn't be in this league. 10 minutes now remaining in the first half. It's with Ford. Finds Goring. Goring pushes it forward to Winnell. Winnell to Sykes. Can Sykes make anything? He's going to find Ford out wide. Cut back to Sykes to find Winnell. Can we create anything? Sykes and Winnell linking up. It's going to be Winnell. And he's going to find the back of the net to put Oxford United level in the 39th minute. And can I just say the play here from Oxford United is just fantastic. That is the kind of link-up play that we need if we are going to challenge for the title. Like the amount of passes that we put together just to create that. We sold the defender a treat with that one-touch pass in from um, Winnell and Sykes. Left so much space and that's a great finish there from Winnell as well. Put it out of the range of the goalkeeper and slots it home. Not too much action has happened after the goals but we look to drive forward with Winnell. Not going anywhere but plays it out wide to Ford. Can Ford create anything? He's going to find Winnell again. Always open for the pass. McGuain. Finds the ball to Sykes, but it just doesn't quite make it, and it's intercepted. Wickham now can push forward, but we intercept it. Maguane finds Sykes, right on the cuff of half-time. Sykes trying to do skills and gets intercepted again by Swindon, and the ref is going to blow for half-time. And to give us our due, it's not been a bad half away from home. Um, I'm very impressed with how the lads have come out and performed today. Sam Winnell, he's had three attempts, obviously. It's... It's not, a, it's not a bad one. The other chances were very difficult for him to take, but that, that last one, he slotted it home, and hopefully we can come out the second half fighting as well. We're going to get the second half underway, and I've had a very decent team talk, this time with the team. Both teams just adjusting after the break. It's going to be with Grant now to push forward to Payne. Can Payne pick anyone out? Yeah, acres of space for the lad. It's going to fall to Hope. Hope finds Grant to have a shot, and by the look of things, it just bobbled up in front of him as he went to take that one. Um, if we watch here as he passes it back, that little bobble there just sends him off and he does well to get the strike away but sends it miles over the bar. Now Swindon look to be menacing down at the wing. Can they pick anyone out with Shepard in them? Well, they're going to go back to Caddis. Can Caddis create anything? Oh, what an absolute turn there from the lad. He's going to pick out Grant. Not going to have a shot this time. He's going to be intercepted. Donahue's going to push it forward and the ref's going to call it back for something. I honestly cannot understand what he's brought it back for, but Pittman's going to come on for Hope for Swindon Town. We did make a quick sub as well um, for Winnell, for Matty Taylor. I always forget his name, I do apologise. There's too many Matties in the Villa team on my other road. I always have to remember it's Matty Taylor, but Matty Taylor's going to come on for Winnell. They have a free kick. Don't ask me how. 22 yards out. Caddis to take. He's got men around him now. 
Is it Donahue? Donahue's going to step up to take. He's going to whip it in, and it's just going to fly over the bar. And that is definitely a let off for us there. Caddis there with an absolute beautiful free kick to get it over the wall. He just can't quite direct it down, and that is definitely a let off for us. We are going to make some changes as Moschino is going to come off for Tucker, and also Sykes is going to come off for Kelly. Swindon Town once again looking to cause problems as they push forward out wide to Stevens, back to Pittman. Paul Pass, but he still picks it up anyway. Push forward now to Payne. Payne now. Little push forward to Donahue. Donahue to have a shot, and that is catching practice there for Eastwood. Right on the 80 minute mark, we push forward. It's forward. It's a two on one situation. Forward now. Cuts it across to Taylor. Taylor now sees a run from Henry. Henry one on one. And how on earth has he put that wide? Dying embers of the game, that is exactly what we needed. Henry in that sort of position and somehow he's floated the ball wide of the target and the score remains 1-1 one, one in the 80th minute. After that scare now, Swindon Town look to push forward. Pittman, he's going to go out wide to Smith. He's going to run down that line, long sold to treat again but get back into position but he's been sold again, it's with Smith. Can they do anything late on? They're going to find Iandalo, he's going to cut it back. Find Grant. Looking for a pass forward to Donahue. Donahue to take the shot. And that's a great save there from Eastwood. Late on in this game to keep it even. Swindon Town are really asking questions. It's a great shot there from Donahue. And an even better save there from Eastwood to push it just wide of the post. 85 minutes on the clock. Swindon now look to make a substitution. Linden's going to come on for Donahue or Lydon. Can he be the difference for Swindon Town? Five minutes on the clock. Stevens takes the free kick. Sings it into the box. We're going to try and get this one clear. It's in the box now. Henry tries to dribble it out. Bad decision. It's going to fall to Smith. And that's going to zing just wide of the post. And Swindon Town are asking some real questions now. Deep on in this game. Claire just misfoots it. And it goes under his foot. And it's just wide of that right post. This is dangerous stuff. Final minute of the game, we look to push forward. Maguane, can he create anything here? We need this desperately. Tries to take it too far. They are going to pick up the ball with Friars. Push it forward to Lydon. A little stumble, but he's still got the ball at his feet. Pushes forward to Pittman, and the ref is going to blow the final whistle. And they were on the break there. We definitely got away with that one. <laughs> and it's not a bad result. Um, after the rumping that we've had lately, um, I will take a 1-1 one, one against Swindon Town any day of the week. But going forward, we need to start getting some more points on the board if we're going to achieve promotion this season. Hopefully, in the next game, we can have a better performance, score a few more goals and, and keep a clean sheet. That's a massive one for us at the moment because our defending has been awful. Now that the rep has had time to calm down, we're going to try and loan Brown again. Hopefully he won't walk out on us this time when we offer a reasonable um, offer for, for Brown. Last time he decided he was just going to shut the door, walk out on my face, which I'm not too happy about. But we'll, we, uh, we move, we move. So we're going to go for the loan to buy offer again, as hopefully he can preserve a bit of money in the bank. And we can buy him if we do get promoted, just for a year. Um, I don't want to have him here for two years on a loan. 80, 80%? No, 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 no. 65, 35, I'll pay three grand. That's good for... Oh, but you wouldn't take 60. Two million. Mm, 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 okay. I'm thinking more of the 1,750 mark. Personally, myself. That would be an absolute steal, though. 12% add-on clause, you can have that. But 1,750k. 1, 1, uh, Come on. 2, oh my, 2.3 million. Okay, fine. I just want him in the club. I just want him here. Forget promoted, it's a big boy signing. But I think that is a, not the best bit of business, but it's a decent bit of business. But once again, getting this deal over the line has been a massive problem and he's going to decline the loan to buy it off at. Obviously, it wasn't suitable enough for him. Obviously, with Russell's poor form, we're looking at two left-backs. We've got Arsu and Guinness Walker from, I believe it's Wimbledon. 
Um, one slightly younger than the other, uh, but Guinness Walker's got a slightly higher overall, a little bit more expensive, but I think because he's going to be coming in and being a first-team player, we're probably better off just paying a little bit extra um, and getting him at a 63 rated. If we can pick him up at a decent price, um, I think he'll definitely be crucial um, going forward this season, as I just don't find Ruffles is good enough. Uh, definitely not from the performances I've seen from him so far. So if we go in with 800k... There's say a seven seven percent sell on clause. I'm I'm happy with that. I'll take him for eight hundred k. That's brilliant. All we've got to do is just negotiate his contract now. Can't wait for him to fix this bug with the managers. Rotational, bro, you'll be slotting straight into the team, but we'll take rotational just in case. Um, four years, if four years is brilliant, it means I don't have to worry about this for a while. No release clause. Yep, awesome with me. And then the last one is just his wages. Okay. Let's have a think. Maybe a little bit more than what he's getting at the moment. Could just tease him in. Extra three grand, uh, 300 quid a game. 30k signing bonus. He's going to accept that brilliant welcome Guinness Walker to the team. And after all the transfer rumours and the transfer negotiation, we are at home now against Sunderland at the Kassam Stadium. This is going to be a big game. Um, I'll be honest with you, I don't know too much about Sunderland. Um, I know that they are obviously in the Premier League quite a few seasons ago, but I know that things haven't quite gone to plan for them since. Uh, but we'll see how they get on this season. I would imagine they're going to push for a promotion, so this could be an extremely difficult game for us. And the way we're going to line up today is, as you can see, Barry Maguire's made the bench. We're going to go with Simon Eastwood in goal, Machino and Moore at the back with Hansen and Guinness Walker out wide making his debut, Gorin, Branagan and Kelly in midfield with Ford, Henry out wide and Winnell up front. Kelly's going to come in because Sykes is currently quite tired, um, so I don't want to wear him out. I know he's a very crucial player for us, but Kelly is very decent as well. The way they're going to line up today, and as always, if I do make any uh, bad pronunciations, I do apologise. It's definitely not my strong point. It's better when I hear them on television, which I don't watch too much League One football. But they've got Burge in goal, Fenney and Flanagan in defence with Hum and Onin out wide. They've got Wright, Power and Scoen in front, Greek up front, and then Maguire and Cooch out wide. Or Gooch, should I say. Thank you. Enjoy the game. If we can pick up three points today, that would be magical. If we can even get a point out of this... Um, as I think Sunderland are going to do bits this season, um, then that'll be fine with me as well. Obviously, being the home team, we are going to get this one underway. And from kickoff, it's going to go to Kelly. He's going to pass it out wide now. Look to venture forward with Henry. No options really, so we're going to pass it back to Bragdon. And then he's going to find Kelly in the midfield to Gorin. Passing it around the midfield, which is fine with me. Kelly finds Branagan. Can we go out wide? Now we're going to look back inside for Gorin. Gorin now finds Ford. Just about gets onto that forward now. Finds the pass to Winnell. Winnell flicks it up in the air. Controls it. Can he get into the box? No, he can't. He shepherded it out. And it's going to fall to Gorin. Controlling the possession early on. Branagan. Little turn. He's going to have a shot. Branagan. And I think that's off the post and in. Four minutes in. And we're 1-0 up. Now, I can imagine Sunderland are not going to be happy. And they are going to come right back at us. But to take the lead in four minutes... It was great play, actually, to be fair. We controlled the ball really well. Branagan turns his man beautifully, hits the post. A bit of fortune, but the keeps getting nowhere near that as we take the lead. Sunderland now clearing the lines. It's a mix-up between Guinness Walker and the Sunderland player. It's going to fall to Ford. Can he create anything here? 12, well, 14 minutes in. We're going to push forward to Kelly. Kelly now, little twizzle. He's going to come out with the ball somehow. He's going to try and have a shot, is he? And that's a great save there from the keeper. He's going to go out for a corner. And we are really pressing Sunderland early on. Their defending is not great at all. Um, they haven't really troubled us up front either. And if they play like this all season, they are going to struggle. Obviously, it's only 15 minutes in. Uh, they might still be getting into the game. But Henry's going to whip this in. It's going to be Winnell. And he's going to find the back of the net. Can you believe it? 16 minutes in. And we're leading 2-0 at home against Sunderland. 
Winnell leaps above everybody to head of that and the keeper is getting nowhere near it, even the lad on the post couldn't get that one cleared. And that is a fantastic ball there from Henry, picks out Winnell an absolute treat, he rises above his man. And can the defender on the line do a bit more than a bit more with this? We'll watch better from this angle. Winnell does fantastic to get his head on it, directs it, and Hum doesn't really jump too high to get to that one at all. As we take as we start as we lead 2-0, which is crazy. Sunderland have took their time, but they're looking to press us now. Gooch, can he pick anyone out? He's gonna go back to Scowen. He's gonna push it forward to Grig. Grig gets it under control and finds power in acres of space. Seems like he doesn't know what to do with it. He's teeing it up, but he's, he's for some reason come outside the box and they're passing it around, but they're not really going anywhere. Uh, it's back to Scowen. He's going to push it back now to Flanagan. To power again. He brings it down. Pass forward to Grigg. Can he get a shot away? We're marshalling them expertly and M Moschino is going to make the decision to come out and tackle him. Push forward now. Branagan. Counter-attacking football. Oh, look at the little step over there. See you later. We're going to push it back now to Kelly. Kelly now, can he create anything from this angle? He's going to find Henry. Henry, no options in field, but Kelly, little turn, finds Winnell. Go on, Winnell, can he have a shot? He can, and he's going to hit the post and come out, and that was a close one. Just over the 30-minute mark, and Sunderland are 2-0 down, but they look to push forward. It's with Grigg. We've got everybody back. CDM zone, just watching it happen. Not happy with that, but it's Maguire now. Trying to get into the box, we're going to tackle him. It's going to fall to Maguire. Pushes it out now to Branagan. Tries to find Henry. Awful pass. It's intercepted. Gooch now looks forward. Finds Grigg. Grigg now powering forward. Little turn. Miss kicks it completely. We're going to try and win the ball. It's a little bit of a ruckus. No one gets to it. Gooch now. Little turn inside. He's going to try and find someone at the back post. And it's going to just go wide. And if they'd have got on the end of that, that could have been the open app for Sunderland to get back into this lovely little turn there. And I think... Oh, he's actually offside. So it wouldn't have counted anyway. But definitely the first chance that Sunderland have had to trouble us. Right on the cuff of half-time, Flanagan has it for Sunderland, looks to go forward, Hansen's going to win the head out, it's going to fall to Henry, Henry little knock down to Branagan, Branagan now finds Kelly, Kelly's been fantastic in the centre of the park today to come in for Sykes, forward, finds Winnell, Winnell running through, little dink, and oh my days, he made it look so easy, a little bit naughty that, take a bow son, not too much pressure on him as we are leading 2-0 but I've got to give him props for that finish. Like, that is beautiful play from Oxford. Great through ball from Ford. And ugh, that is just a naughty, naughty little finish from Winnell. Jeez. Take an absolute bow. Sunderland now to get us back underway. 3-0 down in the first half. Like, this is not looking good for Sunderland. They're going to seriously need to strengthen going forward this season. Because... This performance from Sunderland has been absolutely awful. The ref's going to blow for half time and I can't be any happier. 3-0 up and we've looked deadly. We have looked absolutely deadly on the break. Winnell, he's had three shots and he's scored two. He's been, he's been a live wire up front. But we can't rest on our laurels. We've got to come out second half and do the exact same. Put as many past Sunderland as we possibly can. Sunderland now to get us underway in the second half and can they come at us as we have completely dominated this game? They're going to go out wide, look to push forward now to Maguire. Can Maguire create anything? He's going to have to go back with Shepard in him well. They're going to find power, acres of space, out wide again to Maguire. Poor pass, is intercepted. It's going to fall to Kelly. Kelly sees the overlap from Winnell. Winnell's going to try and run forward, cut it back, find Kelly. Kelly, we know he's got a bit of skill. We know he's got a bit of pace, he's going to have a shot, and that's an easy catch for Burge in goal. Very dull second half, but we're going to make a substitution, and Taylor and Maguire are going to come on for Moschino and Winnell. Better late than never, Sunderland look to press forward, it's with Graham. He's going to go out wide now to Maguire. They haven't really created anything in this game, but they're going to go back inside to Graham, who's going to look for Maguire out wide. Maguire now finds power, edge of the box, finds Graham to have a shot and he doesn't quite connect with it and it's an easy gather for Eastwood. Minutes left in the second half, it's with power, Sunderland, can they at least bring one back? It's power now out wide to Maguire. What's he going to do with it? Little cut back, O'Neill. He's going to push it back now to Maguire who's going to fizz this one into the box and thankfully we get to it first and put it out for a corner. 89 minutes on the clock. We're going to make a quick substitution as Guinness Walker is going to come off for Ruffles. 
give a rough all the last sort of three, four minutes on the pitch, but Guinness Walker has been fantastic since coming in. It's a great performance from the lads, I can't fault anyone. We've just got to defend this corner. Can we keep a clean sheet? It's whizzed into the box. We're going to get to it first. Push it out forward now. Taylor gets it under control. He's shepherded. They're going to pick it up again. Flanagan now. Pushes forward to Gooch. Back to right. Right now to Flanagan. Can they create anything? Time's are ticking. They try to push it forward and the ref is going to blow for full time. And that's a 3-0 victory today for Oxford United. And like I said, I can't fault any of the lads. Maybe we could have been a little bit more clinical second half. Um, but there was no real need for us to do that as we already ruled the game first half and three in the first half. It was basically put to bed there and then. Sunderland need to strengthen massively going forward as they really didn't pose much of a threat. And I'll happily take those three points when they come like that. But as always, that's going to wrap up today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you did enjoy it, please leave it a like, please subscribe and please comment as well. Uh, your feedback means so much to me because it means I can one make these series a little bit better. Um, and obviously being as small as I am as well, if you guys want to get involved, um, it's always nice to see. And it, it just helps me out to come up with new ideas, players to bring in. And you can also get involved a little bit more. But if you did enjoy it. Uh, please leave a like, please subscribe and I will catch you in the next one. Have a great day and goodbye. Yeah.